Okay. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this, the um, Development Control Panel meeting, which is being held here at the Civic Offices on an online stream via live link on YouTube. Members of the panel are present in the Council Chamber, and I'll ask, ask them to introduce themselves shortly. Some officers are present here as well. Others will be joining the meeting online. In respect of any officers who are online and other online attendees, I will ask them to identify themselves and any organisation they're representing when they're called to speak. Uh, for those present in the chamber, please be aware that we are not expecting a fire alarm this evening and the event the alarm sounds, it is the real thing, and exit the building by the nearest marked exit assembled outside as indicated by the marshals. To ensure that we provide a good viewer experience and conduct the meeting so that everyone is clear what is happening, I ask that everyone who is online maintains their microphone muted and to switch off their video feed until they are called to speak. When you are called to speak, please switch from the video feed and unmute mute your microphone. Put my teeth back in in a second. Okay, I now introduce everybody. I'm Councillor McLeg, I'm Chair of the Development Control Panel. Good evening, I'm Councillor Keith McLean. I'm one of the Vice Chairs of the Development Control Panel this evening. Good evening, I'm Agla Ginnigian, I'm Planning Solicitor. Good evening, I'm Paul Keane, one of the Development Management Team Leaders. And the other side of the room. Good evening, I'm Councillor James Lancaster, substituting for Councillor Bowyer tonight. No, you don't need to introduce yourself, it's just for the members and officers. Okay, Rex. Councillor Rex, Exxon, and the Vice Chair of the Committee. Uh, Peter Brown, Head of Democratic Services. Okay, um, as I said, the meeting is being streamed via the, Lu the Council's YouTube channel and recorded. We will not be using the chat functionality in the remote meeting software and it will not be monitored. Uh, for the benefit of those watching online and the members of the public in the, the chamber here tonight, I'll just explain how I intend to conduct the meeting. For each item, the development control manager or planning case officer will introduce the application. Where there are presentations, these will be displayed on the screens of those accessing the meet meeting remotely. I will invite the members of the public, parish and ward councillors to speak in the objection and then the applicant or the applicant's agent to exercise their right of reply should they choose to do so. Where there are councillors speaking in favour of an application, I will invite them to do so before an applicant ex exercises their right of reply. I will then ask panel members if they have any points of clarification on the introduction and representations. If making reference to either the report or late papers, please ensure you give a page number. The planning officer will then comment on speaker's comments and address any points of clarification raised. I will then move the recommendation in the report for the purpose of debate and invite one of my vice chairs to second. This is a formality and does not necessarily mean that either of us support or oppose the application and I will ask them to state their name when seconding. I would, I would ask that panel members who intend to move an amendment be clear in, a, in a respect of what they are proposing. If an amendment is moved, I will formally request a member of the panel to second it so that when the amendment, so that amendment can be debated. I will ask them to state their na name when seconding. I will ask panel members if they want to raise any points of debate on the amendment. Each panel member will have up to three minutes to speak. When all contributions have been made, I will sum up, take a vote on the amendment. If the amendment is agreed, it takes the place of the original recommendation and becomes the subject of a debate. Once all contributions have been made, I will sum up and take a vote on the motion or amended motion. If the motion or amended motion is not agreed, I will ask members of the panel if they wish to move an alternative motion. If one is, a, is moved, I will formally second or request a member of the panel to second so that they, the motion can be debated. I will ask them to state their name and seconding for the records. And at that time, I will ask panel members if they want to raise any points of debate or an amendment. Each member will have three minutes to speak. When all contributions have been made, I will sum up and take a vote. I would ask all participants to keep their contributions to allocated time of three minutes each and to switch on their video to speak only when invited to do so. And I will remind them when they have 30 seconds remaining. If legal advice is required at any stage, I will invite the Council's legal representative to comment. 
As we have only some members of the public present, for the benefit of those viewing our proceedings on YouTube who may not be able to see all councillors on the stream, I will take a vote by names where appropriate. In the event that connectivity is lost, the meeting will be paused until the link is restored or the person losing connectivity is able to join by telephone. If we are able to restore the link, if we are unable to restore the link, I will seek advice in respect of continuing the meeting and make a judgment based on the situation at that time. Okay, we now move on to the agenda. I've done the introductions. Pete, do we have any apologies? Uh, yes, Chair. Uh, apologies received from Councillor Priestley and, as you heard, uh, from Councillor Bowyer, who is substituted by Councillor Lancaster. Thank you. Uh, declarations of interest. Do any councillors wish to disclose any interests? Members should declare any disclosable pecuniary interests, including other pecuniary interests they may have in a business to be transacted, and officers to disclose any interests they may have in any contract to be considered. Anybody who wish to enlighten us? I'll take silence as no. Okay. Public participation. Uh, public participation questions. Do we have any questions from members of the public not related to the items on the agenda? Uh, no, Chair, nothing received. Thank you. Okay, we now move on to the uh, plan applications on the agenda. Uh, application number 21005044, full one, number 160, Ramson Avenue, Conobre, Milford, Kennedy. Paul, would you like to introduce the report, please? Thank you, Chair. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> so the application is a retrospective uh, application for five condenser units um, to a retail property. Uh, the picture that you're seeing is an aerial photo um, of the application site where the arrow is. Sorry, Pete, I'm not seeing anything on my screen. Just bear with us while we sort out the technology. Sorry, Chair. Sorry, thank you. Um, I'll start from the top. So the application is a retrospective application for five condenser units, um, and that, w that is to a, a retail unit on, on the corner of Ramsons Avenue and Yarrow Place. Uh, the photo you can see, or the arrow photo you can see, is a picture of the application site. Next slide, slide please. That's a £50 fine, Rex, for having your phone left on. Sorry, Pete, we, um, we missed out the site location plan. Can we take it to the... That's it. So the site location plan um, uh, on the left and the block plan on the right, um, the hatched areas uh, show the location of the condensers. Uh, next slide, please. And again. And this is the floor plan, again, showing the position of the condensers. Next slide, please. 
Um, this is the elevation as existing, uh, again, retrospective from Rams Ramson's Avenue. Next slide, please. And again, from Yarrow Place. Next slide, please. So this is a photo taken from Rancers Avenue and Yarrow Place, uh, showing the corner of the building. Shows the units uh, with uh, the screens attached. Next slide, please. Again, from Ramsons Avenue. And again. And this is showing the wider context. So on the left, you can see the site. Uh, wider context within the street scene. Next slide, please. And again, back to the aerial photo. That concludes the presentation, Chair. Okay. Any questions of clarification from the officer at this point? Okay. We um, do have an objector here tonight on this application. Mr. Whelan, are you out there? Just oh. coming off mute. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, Thanks very much. Okay. Um, just to remind you, you have up to three minutes to make your points, and I will remind you with 30 seconds remaining. Thank you, Chair. Um, okay, my name is Mark Whelan, the GLPC Chair and Chair of our Planning Committee at Great Linford Parish Council. Um, what I would like to uh, object to on this application is um, just taking you through the actual um, documentation. Uh, using your numbering system. <clears throat> but first of all, the landlord is Milton Keynes Council. I'd just like to keep that at the top of everybody's mind. Uh, 2.1 on the application where the introduction for the site is, the application site is a ground floor retail unit, um, and it says it's predominantly residential. Um, and uh, and what I'd like to point out was, was this ever a retail unit? The last time this location was used, it appears, online from research, it was Mills on Wheels. Uh, 2.4 on the application uh, talks about a, uh, the application is partly retrospective, um, as Paul's intimated there. Uh, the condensers are currently in situ. So the existing proposal, or the existing elevations, are based on the fact that these uh, condensers were put in without planning, planning in place to start with. Um, 3.5, you've got an uh, article regarding the human rights. So we all have a right to enjoy your existing home peacefully. Um, article 1 of the Human Rights Act also protects your rights to shares, licences and leases or place restrictions without good reason. Now, on uh, 3.5 of that, uh, it, it says that uh, the first protocol re regarding the right of respect for persons, private and family life and home... Uh, however, these potential issues are, in this case, amply covered by consideration of the environmental impact of the application. Uh, 4.1, I believe, is incorrect. Uh, no pre-application was thought, no, because um, an enforcement notice was threatened with, uh, with the applicant uh, and told that they needed to put in an application. So I'd like that minuted that uh, this, this is retrospective due to Milton Keynes Council's own building um, having having a potential enforcement action put on it. 5.1 refers to policy NE6. Now, NE6, NE6 really get, says the siting, layout, landscaping, and detailed building designs and proposals, coupled with other noise-specific mitigation measures, should seek to avoid and minimise the adverse effects of noise and vibration, rather than... 30 rely seconds. On... Is that it? I've got my time again. No, you've got 30 seconds to finish off, Mr Whelan. Oh, okay. It's clearly not long enough, is it? Uh, okay, so this is a retrospective planning application that was flagged by an enforcement notice. It's a good way to circumnavigate planning. MKC have a duty to be responsible and accountable landlord and should be showing respect and integrity to their residents. Uh, on balance, this is best suited to an industrial area. These, these plates, this actual site is monstrous. You can see that's, by the pictures. That's actually time. Just finish that sentence, please. Okay. The, the, this application should be considered on the basis, when you look at those photographs, these condensers are absolutely monstrous and need to be in an industrial estate. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have a right to reply in favour in favour of the um, application. Mr Sirif, would you like to step forward to the table in, at the front, please? 
And if somebody would be so kind as to show him how to use the technology, please. And the, um, the same rules apply to yourself. You have up to three minutes, and I'll remind you of 30 seconds remaining. And could you just please introduce yourself before you start your presentation? My name is Bachita Sira, and the gentleman behind me is my client, Mr. Innes, and I'm rep representing him. Um, I, can somebody read the objection again, please? Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Have we got the objection? Okay, one, one, one of the questions which I understood is the condensers outside are monstrous. Now, to move the air and to cool the um, meat inside, you need that size. Um, I don't think you can get any smaller than that. And the, the engineer who worked on it, I had already asked him the questions. He said, this is, this is what is needed, the temperature that the meat should be kept. Is that all you wish to, 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 to say? Well, uh, unless there's any further question, um, but please cro cross fire if you have got any other, and I will Just answer. remain at the desk for a moment, because there may be some points of clarification from members, or even the, the objector can ask you for a point of clarification to, on what you've just said. Okay. Okay, members, over to you. Any points of clarification of what you've just heard from either the objector or the um, right of reply? Councillor McLean. The first thing I'd like to ask is of, um, of the objector who referred to, I think, section 3.5 and the Human Rights Act and the paper. I haven't got a 3.5 in my paper, so I'm wondering whether the objector has got a different set of papers than I was sent. In which case, if he has, and I'm not using the most up-to-date ones, I'm going to ask for a deferral. Yeah. Uh, Paul, I'm, could we... I haven't, got, I haven't got access at the moment to I, see Mr Chair. No, I haven't got to see Mr. I've just got the original papers which just were sent out, and likewise, I've just got 3.4. Can we clarify that, somebody, please? Mr Whelan, when you referred to 3.5 in your presentation, are you referring to the Council agenda? Uh, so it's 3.5 of the Human Rights Act 1998, yeah. So you're referring to 3.5 in the Human Rights Act, not in the Council agenda? Um, so let's have a quick look. Uh, just bear with me. I just need to know whether it's in the Council agenda or in, in your objection you're referring to 3.5. It's your, it's your paperwork, it's the Council agenda. Not on our paperwork, there isn't a 3.5. Chair, just okay. to say as well, I haven't got it on the PDF online of application either. Mm, okay, that's interesting. I just simply downloaded off the off the website. Uh, I'm just going to double check the um, CMIS website, Chair. Okay, I think we'll just have a five a five minute adjournment while we just clarify this. Sure. Thank you, Chair.
Okay, everybody, w w welcome back. Um, we have cl clarified by, both by the online and the, the paper, hard paper. Okay, there is no 3.5. The, um, the human rights issue, which the gentleman was referring to, is in actual point 9.3 of your of, of your agenda. Was that 9.3, Paul? Yes, 9.3. Um, Keith, did you want to make some further points? Well, that wasn't the only one that uh, Mr Whelan mentioned that I couldn't track, so I'm a bit concerned that he's actually talking to the same document that I'm reading along with everyone else. Um, I do query that on the, the document that we have in front of us, uh, the report, the applicant is Mr Anis Badaruddin, but on the uh, update paper, apparently Mr Mr Sabif is the applicant, so who is the applicant is a question. I've also then got questions um, that Mr. Sirard mentioned about the size of the um, refrigeration units, which I've not, I haven't got the technical skills to understand. But if they were required, at what point did someone say, I'll just stick them on the public highway? Because it's not something, the fact you need to call me, it doesn't mean, oh, I've got a bit of space there, I'll just put them there. I understand land ownership, but I am concerned that the applicant, one of these two gentlemen, so I'll just put them on the, on, on the, the pavement. It's, uh, it's, not, it's not the sort of thing you do. I mean, you, know, you, you can't just say, I'll put it on the pavement. So I'd like to understand where you thought the permission came from to actually put them there, not the planning permission, but to use someone else's land. Those are the points I'd like clarification of, Chair. Mr. Sirif, I think it was, would you like to try and help us out with the, those questions from Councillor McLean? Oh, just before I ask you, has anybody else got any questions of the, the applicant at, at this stage? Okay. Mr. Whelan, did you have any questions of the applicant at this stage? Thanks, Chair. Um, I mean, basically, I, unfortunately, I wasn't able to cover off everything I wanted to cover off in three minutes, but uh, in, in essence, uh, the fact that these were put in no, no, planning. No, no, I'm asking you if you've got a question of the applicant, not to make a further statement. Have you got any questions of the applicant? Yeah, okay. So uh, so why did the applicant think that it was reasonable to um, to put them uh, probably nearly 500, 500 centimetres over uh, the, the uh, I think, well, we could probably call it a flower bed, wouldn't we, but into the parking area. So... Um, that, would, that would be my main question. Okay, that sounds like a very similar question to the one Councillor McLean's just asked, so we'll let the applicant and their agent um, respond. Regarding the size of the condensers, um, that is the smallest we could put, and it was a professional mechanical engine. It was a professional mechanical engineer who was employed on this project to make sure. And I, I, if I remember right, I did speak to somebody in the planning uh, regarding the, what level of noise is, is acceptable. And what has been installed is that level is less than what was required. Yeah, but the, the, the point we're trying to answer at this stage, I, I, get, I understand all that, but is, is the, the size of them and where you've located them on the public highway, did, did you um, get, get any advice to say that um, it would be acceptable to locate them in the position they're currently in? Um, yes, I did put in the planning application but that was after it was installed. Yeah, so, so when, when prior to installation, when you realised the size of these units involved, did you seek any advice from anybody to say where, where, where they could be located on the public highway? Um, uh, no, no advice on that, that extent. But at the end of the day, that is uh, away from, if you look at the location of it, the public footpath is about eight me um, seven to eight meters away from the building, and no way anybody could run into that condenser. Okay, I think we, I think we've heard, heard the answer. The answer is 
it sounds to me like you didn't seek any advice. I think the legal officer just wants to come in at this point. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to clarify, um, the highways matter is separate from planning. However, a willful obstruction of a highway is an offence, and that would be dealt with separately by the local planning authority. It, the onus is on the applicant to resolve and regularise that issue. Um, there is a method of doing that, which is set out in the report. Um, the applicant would require to uh, speak to the highways authority and ask for them to make an application to mag magistrate's court. Um, on the grounds that the highway is not necessary um, and it is for the highways authority to decide whether they make that application or not but as we said before it's a separate issue from the planning application okay thank you thank you for that any further points okay mr william you got any further points of clarification before we move on um, I, I understand that, uh, uh, just, just going back on the solicitor's details there, uh, I understand that uh, it, the, the highways are treated separately, but your own highways department did actually state, uh, which hasn't been put in the... Uh, yeah, in just the hang on, hang on. We, we, we've, just, we've, just, um, we've just established that the highways is a separate matter to the planning permission we're considering this evening. So that's the onus is there on the applicant to... to get the magistrate's court to agree with his view on that. Okay, so I'll take that as you've got no further points of clarification in terms of the application itself. In which case, um, I'm formally going to move the recommendation on, on your papers, which is for permission subject to conditions. Can I see a seconder, please? Thank you, Rex. And I'll throw it open to debate. Councillor Lancaster. Thank you, Chair. I, I'm finding this very difficult that something has been built on property that isn't owned by the applicant mm -hmm. and, and they haven't actually got any, been given any advice or any permission for them to do so. So I think outright that this needs to be looked into. I know it's getting looked to from highways on a separate matter, but I can't see myself looking at in favour of something that they don't have permission to build on, whether it was retrospective or not. Anybody else? Rex? Well, I fully concur with what you've just said. And I also recognise that it does say here the highways officer acknowledges it's not a valid planning refusal reason. Ownership of the land is something entirely different. So we can grant planning permission uh, for anything, but if the owner of the land doesn't want it, that's entirely up to them. Now, the owner of the land is Milton Keynes Council, open brackets, highways department. It, they are perfectly entitled to go against the, the spirit of whatever decision we come, in, come into today. No, I don't like retrospective things. I don't like uh, a building on highways land. Having, having said that, this particular location within Conneborough isn't the most uh, beautiful uh, area. And so from, from the aspect of loss of amenity, the only real loss of amenity is the potential of noise. And so long as the mitigation that they put around it is satisfactory, then, then that's fine. At any one time, if it is found that it's not satisfactory, then Environmental Health, which is also Milton Keynes Council, can also go back and take action against it. Is that all your points, Rex? Yeah. If you could turn your microphone off, please. Any other points, Keith? Thank you very much. Thanks to James and Rex for their comments. Um, I'm very much in sympathy with, with them in the, the view, and as you said, by express, I just wonder what the, the applicant would think if I went and built on his front drive, because basically he's built, built on something that I own as, as a, a member of this council. Um, it is quite worrying that you didn't seek any advice about whether you could just put something on someone else's land. I don't understand why it's, uh, it got to this point. I remember it coming previously. 
It does look better now with the wooden uh, surrounds. Uh, is reducing the amount of noise. And I was aware from what our uh, legal advisor said, uh, that's in the paper, that there is uh, a route to go forward to have the stopping up. I'd also like to recommend that we as Milton Keynes Council would like to sell the land to the gentleman at uh, an agreed price, because that then would regularise it in a different way, because it would be his land and it would be stopped up. Um, unfortunately, I think if we reject the application now, we will probably lose at an appeal, and therefore I will probably either abstain or vote in favour. Okay, that comes down to me. Um, right, again, I think this is a, a difficult one, an unusual application even. I can't remember too many like this in my coming on 22 years on this council and probably about 18 years on and off of this committee in various forms and guises. Um, but we have to remember, we, are, we have to be guided by valid planning reasons if we put a refusal up. And as Keith rightly pointed out, the chances of a successful defence of any appeal would be challenging. In my view, the applicant may not have, have, have acted as we would have liked and seeking advice from the relevant people. However, we've heard advice from the legal officer, but that is a different process to the planning application. And so the fact that these condensers are on the public highway currently is, a, is taken away from the planning process. We've just got to look at the planning matters. And in terms of the planning matters, retros, there's no, no law which prevents retrospective applications. We see them every single time we, we meet almost. No mat, and we've all voiced our discontent over many years, but the law is there. So, and I really can't see anything to justify a refusal on this. So I shall probably reluctantly be voting in favor. Anybody else before I take the vote? Okay. We'll call each of you individually so our, our viewers online can see exactly how people are voting. So we're, we're voting on the recommendation for approval subject to conditions as set out in the agenda. Councillor Exxon. Four. Councillor Lancaster. Abstain. I shall vote for Councillor McLean. I shall abstain as well. So by my limited guise of maths, that's two for and two abstentions, and so the um, application is granted. Thank you. And that concludes the, um, the business this evening. I'll close the meeting at 19.33.